صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم
so that you can allow these stories, and so that you can allow these lessons, and so that you can allow these historical anecdotes to take you closer in your goal of gaining ma'arifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we find that when we are to internalize the story of Nuh, or to internalize the story of Ad and Samud and the people of Sha'id and the people of Nadia and so on and so forth, that again the goal of this is to reflect upon them and see if I was to be living during this time, how would I act? If I, for instance, lived during the time of Isa alayhi salam, would I be amongst the supporters of Isa or against or, 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 or against Isa supporting? The if I was present, for instance, during the uh, period of the people of Medea, would I be amongst those who engage in bringing people towards goodness by performing Abad al Ma'ru and forbidding them from evil by performing Abad al Munta? Or would I be of the silent majority who keeps quiet and who eventually is condemned within the first place? Similarly, when you take a look at the Ahadith, or when you take a look at the stories or the examples of the Ahim Bayh, we have to do the same exact thing. That is to internalize the message, internalize the lessons, and ask as if to pose ourselves the question what would we do if we were there? If we lived during the day of Ashura and we were present on the place of Kabbara, would we be on the side of the moment of saying, Ayyim Salatu or would, we, or would we be on the side of those opposing the Muslim state? It's very easy for us to say that we would be on the side of the Muslim state. But when you have 30,000 people standing in front of 100, 120, and, you know, depending on the narration and depending on the historical sources, would it be a lot easier for us to go inside ourselves with the majority? First, we go ahead and we see that within the school of the Ahim Bay, there is a particular emphasis on an analysis of different historical circumstances that have taken place. Be it with those within the whole of Quran, or be it of those in terms of an analysis of the lives of the Imams of the Ahmed Faith, and in the Salatu Islam, for that October. We come and we see that some of the Arabah, uh, they come forth and they say that the best way to understand pre existence is to imagine yourself as you mentioned to live in that moment. If we want to understand the historical, historical circumstances, for instance, surrounding the life of Ali and Adabar, Ali Salatu was Salam, then what we have to do is imagine ourselves living with the world. How would we act? How would we feel? How uh, would we react when these people of oppressors come forth and they take the right of us? And so on and so forth. And every story, every anecdote, every circumstance that we reflect upon, that we hear about, that we analyze, always put yourself in those shoes and try to reflect and try to determine exactly what decisions we would make if we were to be living within that moment. And arguably, amongst the most um, confusing periods within Islamic history is the pre-battle of Karbala period in the city of Kufa. So we go out and we see that every year, unfortunately, we have to come forth and discuss the same exact period on the member of the Muslim Hussein and these days of the Hajj. Because there's a group, there's ideology that's constantly presenting itself in these days. Next Muhammad, they will do the same. Last Muhammad, they did it as well. Who come, or a group of people who come forth and present this viewpoint that the Shia of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu was were responsible for killing Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu Which in itself for us who have grown up in the culture of the Azar of Imam al Hussein and weeping for Imam al Hussein and loving Imam al Hussein and performing the ziyara of Imam al Hussein, of course it's something that we immediately come forth and we reject. And we state that absolutely not. The Shia, the Imam of Hussein, Ali Salatu Salam, were those views, the quarters of him who died in this way. But then you come forth and you see that every year they come forth and they present the historical analysis of the city of Kufa, of the people of Kufa. And they do their very best to demonstrate 
exactly how the people of Kufa, who are known as the Shia, Ali ibn Abi Talib, who we also call ourselves, are responsible for the killing of Imam al Hussein, Ali Salaam. You see, the primary reason for them coming forth and constantly bringing up this agenda is because they want to remove responsibilities from their leaders. If someone came and told you that your mother, your father, they did this very bad action, Immediately, the first natural response that would come forth in the state is my parents would never do something like that. Similarly, if someone comes in to complain about your child that they were misbehaving during the Nezris, immediately, what would you do? My child? No. At least you will think that immediately, and then you will go and try to investigate. But you often come forth to see that when an individual, when a human being is so embedded and so intoxicated with the love of people and from Omeya, and they'll do their very best to try to remove all of the responsibilities or all of the actions or, or, or all of the atrocities which the Bible Maya has committed. Thus, in order for us to come forth and respond to a this particular viewpoint that is again making its way on social networking and on the internet, it becomes a great importance for each and every one of us as the followers of the other faith, not against the Islam, to do our very best to defend them whenever possible. Just for today's discussion, we want to try to reflect upon that period of school study prior to the Battle of Kedera, see what happened, what developed, and try to respond to this question. Did the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib, did the Shia of Imam al Hussein, were they responsible for leading Imam al Hussein to Kedera, and were they eventually responsible for killing the Imam al Hussein? Firstly, in terms of reflecting upon the history of the city of Kufa, we see that the city of Kufa became under the Islamic government during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. Following the Salatah of al Abakr, we come forth and we see that Umar ibn Khattab continued the legacy of Abu Bakr, which was to do its very which was to do their very best to try to extend, which was to try to increase and expand the Islamic Empire even if it meant by spreading the religion of Islam, as they say, by the street. Thus we come forth and we see that Umar ibn Khattab the established a man by the name of Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqar as the general of Sa'ad. Who is Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqar? Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqar is the man who is condemned by the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqar is also the father of a man by the name of Umar ibn Sa'ad, the general of the army on the day of Ashura, opposing Imam al-Hussein, Ayyusa. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas is the military general of Umar ibn Khattab, and amongst his responsibilities is to capture several lands in Iraq, amongst them a city known as the city of Kufa. Due to its strategic location in that region of the Arabian Peninsula, Umar, Umar ibn Khattab appointed Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas eventually the governor of the city of Kufa, and they established it as the military base of the government of Umar ibn Khattab. And eventually, the Osmanid attacks. We come and we see that in the year 35 after Hijra, Osmanid and Afghan had been killed. And the community, the Muslims, they came toward the house of Ali ibn Abi Talib in the holy city of Medina, Ali Salaam. They come toward Amir al Mu'mineen and they say, Oh, Amir al Mu'mineen, we want you to become the leader of the Muslims. Amir al Mu'mineen says, I do not want to take this. They came toward him again and said, Oh, Amir al we need you, for if you don't take it, no one else is worthy of the position. They came back to Amir al several times, begging him, pleading toward him, until Imam Ali Ali Salatu Salam told those individuals who were trying to come to his house and begging him to take the position, that if I rule, I guarantee you people that you will not be satisfied with my leadership. They said, Oh, Amir al you are the brother of Rasulullah, you are the father of al Hasanay, how could we not be pleased with your leadership? He said, because I will lead it according to the teachings of the Holy Quran and the teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They said, oh, I mean, you will do like this, but how did those people see this to you? He said, 
to rule according to and desire them according to your ways, and I guarantee you that very soon you're not going to agree with the justice that I'm going to establish in this country. Eventually, they persuaded him and they put him in a difficult position where he eventually agreed to take over the Islamic position of leadership in terms of the political direction. Of course, Amir al Muslimin, Ali Salatu al Salam, is the guardian of the universe. So, when we speak about the state of the leadership, we mean that it's a political state. Amir al Muslimin, Ali Salatu al Salam, desired to keep the leadership, the Khalasa, in the holy city of Medina, in the footsteps of the holy prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, but due to the public pressure and due to the social circumstances during the life of Amir al-Muslimin, al al-Salam, immediately after the death of Uthman ibn Affan, Amir al-Muslimin, al al-Salam, realized and recognized the importance of leaving Medina to go toward a more strategic location in terms of military attention. So we come forth and we see that Amir al-Muslimin, al al-Salam, al he realizes that from a wide variety of different fronts, he is going to be marginalized along with him, his family, and his kinship. We find, of course, one of those groups that tried to marginalize the position of Ali ibn Abi Talib is Muawiyah ibn Abbas Sufyan ibn Ma'un in Damascus. Furthermore, we come forth and we see that there, there were also these other group of individuals known as the Khawarij, which were slowly presenting themselves with animosity toward Amir al Muslimin, Ali ibn And thirdly, there were those who tried to wage a war against Ali ibn Abi Talib and trying to um, paint this picture of propaganda that Amir al-Mu'minin Ali Salaam was responsible for the killing of the blood of the Khafan, and eventually these were those who were responsible for what is known as the Battle of Jaffa. This Ali ibn Abi Talib and his close companions and his close followers, they realized the importance of leaving the demon and going toward a strategic location for military expedition. Thus, he, thus he traveled toward Kufa and established his government which is why today when you go to visit the um, mosque of Kufa, you go and you see that this is the place where Amir al he laid down this particular law. And you come forth and you see that this was the place of Amir al Salam, where he would come and he would judge between individuals. And you go to these different Bafamas and these sites for after worship and Dua and so on and so forth, because this was the place of, uh, of governorship of Amir al Ali Salatu was Salam for those four years and nine months in which he ruled politically the Islamic state. When we reflect upon the people of Kufa, we see that the people of Kufa immediately, they were those who attached themselves to Imam Ali Ali Salam. In a uh, line said by Uthman ibn Affan, he says, which is the words of Uthman ibn Affan, not the words of Rasulullah, not the words of Imam al he says in his rules that says, Alif Ya Ali, Yajid al Nas al Yajid. He says, Oh Amir al Mu'minin, just your presence, your presence, O Ali, it gravitates people toward you. Today we were to live under the guardianship, under the leadership of Imam Sahib al Asli wa Salam, Ajalallahu Ta'ala, Faraja. Imagine the love that people would have for him. We would love to be around him. We would love to smell his fragrance. We would love to hear his words coming out of his mouth and his stuff that during the days of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There were some really simple people who adored the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so much who would go toward him, not realizing, not understanding that he was an extremely busy man. They would go toward the Holy Prophet of Allah and then they would even come to the city of Kufa from far just to visit the Prophet. They would go and they would shake the hands of the Prophet of Allah. And we know that the Prophet of Allah and Allah, when he was shaking the hands of someone, he would never be the one to remove the hand. He would wait for the other one to remove it before he himself, in order to not disrespect the one who has come to visit him. But it said one day there was this man, the Prophet of Allah and Allah, was leaving the Masjid and was going to fulfill some very important tasks. Of course, the Prophet is a busy man, he's an important man. He's a leader of the government, he's a leader, he's a head of state, he has family responsibilities, he has communal responsibilities, and so on and so forth. And this man comes to visit the Prophet, and he shakes the hand of the Prophet, and he refuses to leave the man. And the Prophet leaves the mosque, and the man says, 
And it says it lasts about 15 days, 20 minutes, when it doesn't just adore it to faith. Because we see that when the blood of the Messiah is that these words of the Jews are done to them, and this is the Messiah, they say, it just feels perfect, though, right? It brings pity toward you, it brings the heart toward you. Naturally, you can understand that when the Messiah is done to the blood, the establishment of government is a statement. Every one of the Shia, those true loyal Shia, they would do their very best to also try to settle the truth. And we know, for instance, that when our Imam Ali Salat is the son, he will establish a message to Sahara and Mesjid Kufa within that region. And, inshallah, we will all be abode to get our love for the Imam. We will all go to my way just to live next to the presence of the Imam. That's the sign that the region in Kufa became an extremely strong hold for the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Which is why that this particular ideology comes present within social media, within the internet, and so on. They say that the Aliyah of Salah became the establishment of government. And the people of Kufa, they fell in love with Ali ibn Abi Talib. And everyone within Kufa were amongst the followers of Imam Ali, Ali Salah. But when someone comes and makes such a blanket statement without understanding the intricacies of the city of Kufa, it's important to see that this is a failure to understand or a failure to truly demonstrate exactly the demographic and dynamic of this particular city. Thus, in order for us to understand this particular city of Kufa and the politics that surround it, we come forth and we see that number one, one needs to understand that there are several common qualities of these people. But before we get into that aspect, we see within historical sources that the city of Kufa was very diverse in many different facets. Number one, it is said that the city of Kufa had a large diversity in terms of the economic standing of people. Meaning what? That over here in the Western world, we have what is known as an extremely large middle class. Thus, we have a wide variety of jobs. Perhaps the percentage of poverty within the UK, within the United States, is very limited in comparison with a nation like Iraq or a nation like Kenya or Tanzania or Pakistan or so on and so forth, because of the large middle class and not a massive gap between the wealthy and the poor. And a common characteristic of any impoverished city is the fact that there is an aristocracy of those who are extremely wealthy, and that on the flip side there is a majority who are extremely poor. There is no one in the middle. The city of Kufa has this particular trait. For instance, we see that during that time of Umar ibn Khattab, when he establishes Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas as the government, and he makes Kufa the military base of his government, you can fortunately see that many members of the Mayo would go and they would move towards Kufa. They could basically get it with a new land that they had just established, a new land that they had just taken over the territory. Thus, they found it an opportunity to go and take over land and build homes and build buildings and rent them out and try to make business out of this new opportunity. Thus, when Omeya they began to lean towards Kufa in light of this economic opportunity. Amongst these individuals is a man by the name of Ash'at ibn Qais. Ash'at ibn Qais is an individual who owns the majority of the land of Kufa during this time. Ash'at ibn Qais is the father of Zu'ja ibn Ash'at, the killer. Of Imam al Hakim al Shirah, Ali Salah Shirah. Please understand this particular point. Ash'at ibn Qais is also one of those individuals who writes a letter to Imam al Hakim al Shirah inviting him to come towards Kufa. It is said that on the day of Ash Shirah, Imam al Hakim al Shirah goes towards Ash'at ibn Qais after all of the family members have passed away. And he begins to call out and say, Oh, Ash'at ibn Qais, aren't you amongst those who wrote the letter inviting me? And now you are standing in front of me again to check out the The man of the faith, Ali Salah, who said, I'll accept this. I stop at the time and say, Allah, that is the father of Allah, and you are the father of Allah. This is it. We see another individual who owns a large property of land within the city of Kufa. is a man by the name of Shabat ibn Rabi, the Abdullah. I mean, Shabat ibn Rabi is the commander of 
the Quran, the army of the tribe of Amr al Islam, and the days of Ashura, according to some historical reports, he is responsible for 4,000 armed men ready to shed, ready to shed the blood of the last day of the Prophet. On the flip side, you see that those Shia, those individuals within the Quran, people that even have the Quran, and those who even did not, those simple people within the city of Kufa, they were punished. They had to be put down, they had to be put down, while all of the property, all of the territory were in the hands of a few members of the This is point number one. Number two, we can fortunately see that when Abu Dhabi Hassan, he establishes the city of Kufa in the middle of the place, people from across the world, from across the Islamic region, who desire to also come to Kufa, in the hope of obtaining some work to see that this is a military base and all these military expeditions are taking place during the time of the first two Khalifah, that this might be an opportunity for us to gain in terms of employment. That we can join the army, we can join the uh, army, we can train, and we can receive some sort of a stipend and so on and so forth. Because they find that a large group of uh, immigrants, they come to a group and they try to start. Oftentimes, again, when a community or a culture, they begin to receive an influx of immigrants, those first couple of years lead to an instability financially, economically, socially, politically, and so on. This immediately responds to the city of Kufa again, with a city that was not very stable in terms of these different facets of government. And thirdly, and perhaps most importantly, we have a difference of opinion in terms of ideology within the city. We have these members of government that have established themselves now during the time of the year of the at a time. They are there, they are present, and they have been marginalized due to the presence of the lovers of the Mahani at a time. Secondly, there are another group of people known as we mentioned as the Khawaj, those who oppose the Mahani at a time amongst the Mahani like the Mahani of the Muridjan, the Mahani of the and his wife. Thirdly, we can fortunately see that there was a layman, a layman within the city of Kufa. There were regular individuals, not knowing right, not knowing wrong. They supported Imam Ali Ali Salam because Imam Ali was their leader. This immediately, they would cling on to the fact that they were known as the Shia of Ali 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 Salam. That anyone who loved Imam Ali, anyone who adored Imam Ali, anyone who lived under the government of Imam Ali, recognizing his justice, recognizing his virtue, recognizing his authority, and so on and so forth, they considered themselves to be as the Shia of the Mahali But they were different from those few individuals who were, who demonstrated their rely on their, 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 their absolute submission to work in Mahali Salaam. Let me put it into perspective for you. Yesterday, in our discussion, we mentioned that there was some group of people who know, who knew Imam al-Hassan Ali Salaam as their leader. They went to the battle with Imam al-Hassan. Where eventually Imam al-Hassan decides to sign that treaty, they go to where Imam al-Hassan has escaped, and we're embarrassed to call ourselves your father. Though they were Messiah of Imam al-Hassan, though they were known as the Shia of Imam al-Hassan, Ali Salatu Islam, can they truly be classified as the Shia in terms of the emotions of the definition of the Shia today? This is that term is exclusively reserved for exclusive terms. Those who not only consider themselves as the followers of Imam Ali Ali Salam, but those who are ready to dedicate their lives and their souls and their existence towards Imam Ali Salatu Islam. These are some different aspects of the infrastructure of the city of Kufa for those of you who are following. And again, please forgive all of the names and the terms, but try to understand the point that we are trying to demonstrate in order to get to our solving of the question. In which is, did or are the Shia in the state responsible for the killing of the Muslim state? I'm going to be precise. Yes, sir. And if you're following the discussion, please recite one more time. So 
third question that we need to pose after understanding the history of the city of Kufa, and after understanding the infrastructure of the city of Kufa, are what are some of the qualities of the people? For sure, we say within the narration of the Amistad, the words of Imam al Sajjah, the words of the same person who gave us the words of Imam al Sajjah, the speaker, the fourth of the Lady Bar, the Amistad, or the words of Lady Zayna, Salamullah, the Ariya, in her famous sermon, we come and we see that each and every one of them condemned the people of Kufa. Thus, if we are trying to remove the responsibility and state that the Shia of Kufa are not responsible for shedding the blood of the faith, then what exactly are the qualities that the majority of the people of Kufa? They come forth and we see that they have a wide variety of qualities which are too deep in them, and there's no doubt, and there's no doubt about the fact that many of the people of Kufa are actually and most certainly responsible for shedding the blood of the Imam of the Sayyid Ali Salaam and his family. Firstly, we come and we see, number one, that they were known hypocrites. We come and we see that one day, on the journey of the Imam of the Sayyid Ali Salaam, to Kefra, where he was a first poet, the word Kufa is stopped by the famous poet known as Ali Salaam. And Salazda comes to the Imam of the Sayyid, and after hearing about the tragedy of the martyrdom of Muslim Ibn Khalil, Salazda comes to the Imam of the Sayyid, Ali Salaam, and he says, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, O Imam of the Sayyid, in regards to the people of Kufa, Kulubuhum Ma'an, Kulubuhum Ma'an, the Imam of the Sayyid, that while their hearts are with you, they desire to be with you in reality, Unfortunately, their swords are ready to stand. Why? Because they didn't feel the motivation. They didn't understand that the Muhammad was saying, I'm going to start the Quran, but the Imam is the Quran. They understand that the Muhammad was saying, I'm going to start the Quran, but again, the Quran is not the Quran, and the Imam is not the Quran, and the Imam is not the comprehension of the parties. Number two, we come forth and we see that these individuals are the same people. When Imam al Hussein died, they were the ones who would weep, they were the ones who would cry for Imam al Hussein, Ali Saran, who when it came time to raise their final sentence, which is in the last word, they were also ready to be killed. This is quality number one. Number two, we find that the people of Kufa were known for their deception. They sent between 12,000 and 18,000 letters to Imam al Hussein, Ali Saran, to Saran, but eventually they deceived him and they scanned the army of Allah. Furthermore, we see that this custom of the people of Kufa continued toward the son of Imam al Sajjah, the man who by the name of Zayd, the Shahid Zayd, Ibn Ali al Khalid. Zayd ibn Ali eventually tries to, after some years after the battle of Basra, he tries to wage a war against the Bismillah and tries to establish the revolution. The people of Kufa, just like they promised Imam al Hussein, they promised Zayd ibn Ali that they would also be his support to try to overcome. We find that the people of Kufa were very fickle in their understanding politics. They were never satisfied with their leadership, sometimes for good reason, sometimes for bad reason. We mentioned that amongst their governors was a man by the name of Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas, who was their first governor. They complained to Amr ibn Khattab that Sa'ad ibn Abu Waqqas never praised Sa'ad. So Amr ibn Khattab is racist, eventually comes to the power of the governorship of Kufa, and then Amr ibn Asa. Then we complained, or Ahmad ibn Yasser complained about the people of Kufa that they're not satisfied with him. He tries to rule with justice, and he tries to follow the teachings of the Quran and, and the Sunnah of the Prophet. But later we find the man that he was called Ibn Abdul Asher, who was the son of Ibn Abdul Asher, who was the eventually comes forth and takes place. Okay? Governor of Kufa. This is the fact that changing of leadership in Kufa is something extremely common. And a nation or a region or an area is always changing leadership, and it again is never going to have stability. And fourthly, and perhaps most importantly, we 
regards to the negative quality of the beautiful paper, the Pesachic war is extremely greedy for that. The moment that the Vanilla and the Yacht comes to where the beautiful paper is going to be, he says, whoever has that perhaps the first time to see that black flag, they can see that flag. They can see the black flag. And they will see the fee reward as thousands upon people who just see the art of the black flag, ready to accept the flag. Thus, when we come to court to try to respond to it, this question and state, did the Shia of Imam al Hussein, i.e., Salat al Islam, were they truly responsible for killing Imam al Hussein, i.e., Salat, or bringing him to a Kaiba and the family that was there? We respond by stating that we have to understand the theological definition of the term Shia. We go out and we speak the term Shia as two different things. As we mentioned, the term Shia has what is known as a general meaning. The general meaning is the meaning that this word Shia means a supporter or a member of a particular group. If it was a man the same Ali Salat and Salat the Bayh of Salah, the other is the same as Lan, the Shia as Ali Ali Sufyan, in Lani Akulla Kunin, Wala Kafafun and Ma'ad, Kafun and Akharan, Fi, Jehovah. But O Shia has been standing there. Uh, if you do not believe in the religion, and if you are not fearful of an afterlife, but at least you flee in this world, and do not torture the children and the women who are pregnant with you. This is the Shia, who is attributed to anyone who even wrote a letter to Imam al Hussein, Ali Salat al Salam, because they said, Oh, Imam al Hussein, we are your father, we are your Shia. But they were those who only wrote this letter because they felt that they could benefit from the presence of Imam al-Hussein. Imam al-Hussein, Ali Salat al-Salam, Ali Salat al-Salam. The wisdom, the leadership of Ali and Ali, they said the justice of Ali, they said the mercy of Ali, they said the love of Ali, they said the beauty of Ali. Thus they figured that if Imam al-Hussein comes, he will also be able to have that in his settlement. But if he does, it doesn't really matter because he's going to support whoever comes next and we're going to end up eventually disliking him, disliking him after a couple of years. There were only a portion of the Shia of Imam of the same in this region. But the fact that the Bible of the Shia exploded in the name of the Lord on every single occasion, and he began to round up the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib, imprison many of them, kill many of them, so on and so forth, if they were unable to make the journey, they were killed. We go ahead and we see that the first classification of those types of individuals are those, for instance, who are imprisoned in the gay faction. Amongst those individuals who are imprisoned, according to some stories, the male of the Of course, we have Nathan and Kamran, the one who killed the Prophet of the Bible, the Prophet of the Bible, Ali Salat al Salam, who was imprisoned during the battle of Karbala. He escaped the prison of the Prophet of the Bible after the battle of Karbala, was eventually caught by the Prophet, brought to where his court, and the Prophet of the Bible killed him. Much to the end of the Prophet of the Bible. Only what did Ali ibn Abi Talib promise to do? He promised to have sex, he promised to bring forth a creation that was responsible for killing him. He says, Tell me, tell me more. Is it Amir al Mu'mineen Ali Salatu Salam told me that a man like you would kill me, and that my last word would be sending my salutations upon my master Ali? He said, And tell me more about what that meant. He said that I'm not Amir al Mu'mineen Ali Salam told me that I would die. On this tree, such as such tree, and so on and so forth. But if you are merciful to me, I will die. If I die for you, then I will die. And more told me what Amir ibn Amin said, I'm going to prove Ali ibn Abi Talib is a liar, and make sure that that does not happen. They killed him in prison during this battle. Period. When he escaped the prison, authorities of the Abu Bakr al Siyah, they captured him from his Salah there, right next to that tree. They crucified him on that tree, and now he's passing away. Oh my God, I'm here to 
وهو غالب وغالب وكله غالب على جسم الأرض غالب الكوب اللي عنده Number two, we have those who were killed either prior to the battle of Kerbera or soon after. We come forth and we see that amongst these type of individuals, we see the instance, the example of Muslim Ibn Aqib, the Safir, the representative, the ambassador of the Prophet who was sent to the Prophet. Amongst those, the man that is able to face the Bin Musa'ib. Face the Bin Musa'ib of Allah, who the Muhammad who said, Ali Salaam is also a point as one of his ambassadors and one of his messengers. The Muhammad who said, sent him to the Bin Musa'ib. They go, they arrive in Kufa, and sent him to the possibility of playing from back toward Mecca to advise the Muhammad who said, what happened and how the people of Kufa were deceived. This is He takes his journey back to work, Mecca, he visits the Muhammad of Hussein, and he says, I'm not going to do it. I'm 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 going to do it. At this moment, the Muhammad of Hussein, and he says, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm 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 going
those who were always careful about every step that Imam Hussein took on the plains of Tekaragu. He wanted or he proclaimed himself as the bodyguard of Imam Hussein. I mean, Imam Hussein was a good occasion, inshallah, we'll talk about that on the night of Asher. He came forth to see the loyalty of his master, the second master of Asher. After they arrived in Tekaragu, some days before the day of Asher, he went toward the river Euphrates. As he reached the river Euphrates, he told the people not to describe the one who was. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm coming here to my wash. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, I'm not going to wait for you. He said, who tried to marginalize his master, Imam Hussein, Ali Sarasu was Quran, and he told him, and he recites these lines of poetry. He says, Intuk, Intuk, Tiruni, Ta'anat, Lid Jamal, Dini, Ala, Dini, Lama Hussein, Ibn Ali, Ala, Dini, Ala, Lid Jamal, Ala, Ala, Dini, Ali, Wa Dini, Lid Jamal, Nabi. He comes and he says that if you don't know me, then I am not the Ibn Hala, Lid Jamal. My religion is the religion of Hussein. My religion is the religion of Ali. It is the religion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you come forward and you see that he is rhyming in the midst of the poetry as well as the custom. But look at the courage and the language that a man like Nata Ibn Harari uses. It is said that at this moment his enemy comes and he stands in front of him. And he says, Oh, Nata, wa ana ala al-Din of Allah. He said, I am the Shia. Ali, I am the Shia, and he says, I am the father of Rasulullah, and this guy comes forth and says, and I am the follower of Allah. Something fits in the front of you can open up here. You see that Imam, uh, whenever the Imam is the Ahli Bayt of Imam, he is trying to protect his own authority and his own custom. You see his value, you see his courage, you see his authority that he has. For instance, in the Battle of Khaybar, just to open up the big point up here, on the Battle of Khaybar, Imam Ali, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam, he starts to tell me poetry that I am the father of this, and I am the father of this, and I am this, and I am this, and I am this. And I'm Ali, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam. What does he just say? He says, well, only you can let me have one of them. And my mother has named me Haidar. A couple of moments later, you see Maha lying on the ground, and Ali is now the father of Salaam, Ali, Salaam. Just before you see the courage of these individuals, and you see the type of responses that these types of people make about them. You talk about this type of life of poetry, rhyming, and everything. And this guy comes to the world, I'm the father of Salaam, Ali, Salaam, Ali, Salaam, be proud of. So he says, Wa'ana ala deen of Uman, and not to be had out of spawns, La wa'an ta'ala deen of Shaytan. The words, Shaytan. He comes forth and he sees after the Quran, he touches the gold, he sees the sheep, he touches it, he kills them, and so on, and so forth. Thus, he concludes that these individuals, these people who come and try to present this world, that the followers of the Hussein or the Shia of the Hussein, those who come over here, and they read from the deep their chest and so on and so forth. They are the reality of the Islam and people who are the author of these things. I saw the Islam is the one who has to live the watcher. But even more illogical than that is the fact that they come forth and they make this claim. They say that this practice of mourning, you'll find it in the details of Islam, so on and so forth, that this practice of weeping and mourning and beating in the chest of the Shia of the Lord in Hazar of the Mount of the Day, I saw the Islam, was a practice. To make the public face their face. They would sit there and they would stand and they would really beat their chest in order to punish themselves for not supporting Imam al Hussein and for actually being the cause of his death. When in reality, as the money could have pointed to this now, that the weeping in the morning for the tragedy of Imam al Hussein and Ali Sarah is something which the previous generation reached as part of the Adam and Jeff of the generation of the Islam. From the Prophet and how weeping in the previous of these tragedies is part of our human nature, is part of our ideology, is part of the demonstration of our love, and not by means or not for the hope of repenting now the law, but rather to demonstrate our love for Imam Hussein and to fulfill the statement when he says, Ya Laika Akunda Ma'akun, Fanafuza, or or Fanafuza Fawza. Oh, Allah, the dawn, O companions of Hussein, we are here to weep for you, we are here 
you have deprived me of the hope that you have a trust for me, but what you have done is you've done to put me back to the church. Be there in the case. And you are not the church. So I have to wait. So I just keep going. Let's see one by one with the comments. As the man that says, I have tried and tried to fill out the type of value that you can do to fill in the way of the man that says, I have this around. But he's trying to, on these last couple of months of the Hara, we commemorate those exclusive from Adam. Before we get to those youth of the defenders of Anand, the same Ali Salaam, we see the example of Anand by the name of Wahab. Wahab from Cambridge comes to where Anand is the same Ali Salaam. According to the story, he's only married for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. He comes to where Anand is the same Ali Salaam. He's back to the Christian. He comes to a religion of Adam. He's been married to the same Ali Salaam. He makes the journey with the moment to him, they reach the Gala. And his wife, who had just been, you know, this newly wed, this bride, she would always go to her husband and say, Oh, well, really, you're going to leave me. We've just gotten married. Let's live our lives, let's grow up together, so on and so forth. There's no way you can leave me. But it's not that one of the older kind of life, but be patient. Surely you will, you know, benefit from this as well. We are defending the legacy of the son of God for that. So on and so forth, with respect that Wahab and Malbay of Ashura goes out and fights back to me until he begins to kill them. At this moment, it is said that in the midst of the battle, Wahab, he comes back to take a break towards the camp of the Nam of Hussein, Ali Sarab to Sarab, and all of a sudden he sees his wife and says, That's far from you, that they will be me, Allah Wahab. Oh, Wahab, go and fight in the way of these valorous, of these wonderful, of these pure people. It is such that Wahab goes towards his wife, he alights from his horse, and he says, Oh, my wife, for all of these days you've been telling me not to go and fight. Now, why are you coming forth and telling me that you want me to go and fight, that you want me to die in the way of the same? It's so that the wife of Wahab gets to where the husband is saying, I'm fighting this guy, I've been here the entire day, to cry that the children of Fatim and Zahra, and I said that I want my husband to be on the side of these people. It is said that this is the story of Wahab and Wahab. He eventually even destroyed himself. His wife was still, and his mother was also killed in the event. Then when we come forth and we see the story of a man, or the story of a boy by the name of Amr. Amr, he comes toward the man of Hussein, and he says, Oh, Allah, 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 Allah,
he says, oh, Abba, Abdullah, I'm, I'm able to make it. Just go ahead and take my two sons out and come with you and let them go and fight and let them be my sacrifice on the day of Ashura. One of them will represent my father, the other one will represent Jaffa. And the Yad is that they go out, they fight down, they fight together, according to the historians, until the elder one calls out, As-salamu alayhi wa sallam, Imam al-Hussain alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam, perhaps at that moment, he began to wonder, what is he going to go and tell Zainab? And he said a couple of moments later, he hears Muhammad call out, As-salamu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi wa sallam, Imam al-Hussain alayhi wa sallam, perhaps at that moment, his heart again was trembling, what is he going to tell Zainab alayhi wa sallam? When Imam al Hussein alayhi salam would ever bring any of the bodies back towards Zainab alayhi salam, we would find that she would raise her hands above them and say, Rabbana taqabbal minna, Allah accept this sacrifice from our behalf. But the tragedy of Zainab alayhi salam, my brothers and sisters, is not limited to the day of Ashura, not even in the least bit. It is said that on that day when Imam bin al Abidin alayhi salam, he was passing away, his body was on the bed, and all of his family members were surrounding him, his companions were surrounding him. It is said that they came toward Imam al Sajjad, and they saw Imam bin al Abidin weeping. They said, Oh, Yaqba Rasulullah, you are right, you think that you are We know that you weep, we know that you are crying, but now you are going to go and visit Abba Abdullah, you are going to go and see Amir al you are going to go and visit Rasulullah. Why are you weeping at this time in your last moment? Because I'm weeping about the tragedy that I have to deal with. They said, Oh, Imam al Sajjad, what, what tragedy in particular are you weeping about? Are you weeping about the tragedy of Abba Abdullah and Hussein? He said, At this moment, no, I'm not remembering the tragedy of my father. They said, Oh, Imam Zain al Abidin, are you crying about the seven arms of Abba Abdullah? He said, No, I'm not crying about that. He said, Are you weeping about the tragedy of Abu Muhammad? He's not that weeping about that. Are you weeping about the trampled body of Abu Muhammad? He said, I'm not weeping about that. They said, Oh, uh, oh, Imam, uh, tell us. Why are you crying like this? He said, something has overcome me. And I began to remember the night of the 11th of Muharram when my aunt Zainab was running from 10 